Today we will examine the efficiency and precision of Autodesk Inventor's bolted connection generator. You can use it to streamline your design process, ensure accuracy, and customize connections with ease. Elevate your mechanical assemblies with standardized solutions and flexible options all within the powerful Inventor environment. Today we're going to look at two methods of using the bolted connection generator environment inside of Autodesk Inventor. The first one will include an object with holes and the other one will include objects with no holes. This first one here, I'm going to place this clip on top of the mechanical channel here and then we will put blind threads into this channel and use the bolted connection generator um, in order to place those in there. So to the first thing that I need to do is I need to place this clip on top of my channel in the right place. To do so, I'm going to use the assemble <clears throat> and I'm going to use my uh, joint tool here. I want it to be a rigid joint and I want the center of this hole right here to be placed on the center of that channel right there. Now it comes in with the wrong configuration so I'm going to use my align tool and I'm going to say I want that surface right there aligned with this surface right here and I'll turn it around so that it faces the other direction and choose OK. So now this clip is locked in place on top of my channel. The next thing that I want to do is actually access the bolted connection generator inside Autodesk Inventor. So I'm going to switch up here to the design tab at the top and I'm going to choose my bolted connection. The first type I'm going to use is this blind connection type <clears throat> right here because this will make threads inside the second or inside this uh, channel that I have here. So I'm going to make sure that I have this one chosen. And you'll see that I have by hole chosen here. There are several different choices. Linear, uh, concentric, on point, or by hole. And since this tool already has a hole in it or this clip already has a hole in it, I'm going to use that. The first thing that it asks me for is the start plane, which is that plane right there. Then it automatically switches and prompts me to choose the hole, so I'll pick that hole. It looks at the hole and it recognizes that the hole that I have in this clip is the appropriate clearance hole for a half inch diameter bolt. So then the next thing all I have to do is choose the blind start plane, which is that surface right there. And you'll see that it starts to generate the hole for itself. If I roll it up, you can see that it's going to drill the hole and everything inside of there. The existing hole is here. It's going to put screw threads inside of the C channel itself. All I have left to do now is to specify my fastener and any washer that I want. To do so, you click right here where it says add a fastener, and it takes you to a list of appropriately sized bolts that would go in that hole. For this one I'm just going to say I want a hex bolt inch and it automatically finds it and puts it in place and then I'm going to add a fastener. I'll add a washer underneath of that. Again it takes me to the appropriate types of <clears throat> uh, hardware that would be appropriate for that and I want this plain washer inch here and then I can choose OK and it automatically puts in my washer and my bolt in place. You'll notice that the bolt extends past and that's normal because you know the shortest bolt that would be appropriate for this situation is that one and it would normally stick through. If you want to look at the threads that it actually put inside of that channel all you have to do is come in and turn off the visibility of the bolt itself and then you can simply look up and you can see that it put the threads inside of that channel there for me. So it does all of the work for you. If I want to bring that back to life, I just simply right click on here and I choose visibility to bring it back in place. In this second example, I'm going to allow Autodesk Inventor to place the hole and the fastener without me having to put any holes in anything. For this, I have my same clip, but this time it has no holes in it, and you'll see that the uh, channel has no hole in it as well. Again, Inventor will put everything in there that I need. 
I've already put this channel or the, my clip in place using the rigid connection. So again, on the design tab up here on the ribbon, I'm going to choose bolted connection. Instead of using the blind connection this time, I'm going to say I want the through all connection. And beside, and instead of using the by hole, since there's no holes existing, I'm going to switch to a linear placement. This is going to allow me to specify where I want that hole to be exactly. On the screen here, it's asking me, it's prompting me for the start plane. So I'm going to say that my start plane is here and it automatically switches to allow me to select the linear edge number one, which I'm going to say is that edge right there. And I can say I want it to be 1.25 inches from that first edge. It automatically switches so that I can select my second edge. So I'll pick that second edge and I'll say I want it at 1.5 inches from that second edge. And then it asks me for the termination. So I will roll this up and I'll pick the terminating edge down there. Now it has the 0.5 inch diameter here because that's what I used on the last one. But if I wanted to do a different size hole, I could simply drop this down and pick whatever other size hole that I want it to be. You'll notice that it's putting a through hole both in the clip and in the channel. So what I need to do now is add a fastener. So again, I can come in here and I can select the bolt that I want, which in this case is going to be again that same hex head bolt. I also want a washer on the top here. So I'll scroll down and I'll pick my plain washer on the top here. Now on the bottom, I also want a washer, but this time it's going to be a cut washer. So I'll say a regular spring lock washer, inch. And then I also want a hex nut on the bottom as well. And when I choose OK, it automatically drills my hole and puts everything in place with the same way as it did before. 